Hi everyone, now I'm just working away at the moment on a few mayflies uh, I had an Irish fly box, a box of wet flies and uh, years ago I, I tied a couple of patterns for, it was basically the magazine, Trout and Salmon I used, to, I used to write for them many years ago and one of the flies I tied and got very popular was what they call the McPhail mayfly now I, I didn't name it, it was just named after me because I tied it uh, it was a pattern I put together from like a small nymph pattern I like to use in the river for olives. Uh, another fly I tied was this one. It was basically a, a pale olive pattern, this mayfly. Now, uh, again, it was from another pattern. This is the pattern here. This is a pattern that I tied for just pale olives, light olives that was coming off. And I just made it bigger. I just used the same colour materials. I just obviously I had the French partridge up the top to represent the, the wing in a way because that's what the French partridge is mainly used for. So I, I, I use that as a guide and it's like guaranteed these flies, they, they, not guaranteed, but the, the colour combination I know works. So when you change, when you move them, they, they, it makes sense. And that's what I did. And this ended up, this pattern as well, the McPhail Mayfly ended up on the, it's one of the top sort of Mayfly patterns of weights in Ireland. Now, uh, this is, as I say, this was one of the flies I did I tied, but never really, I haven't filmed it. So I'm going to film that fly. I'll film this one, I'll film it separate, this one. Uh, it's a rough fly, I mean, it's rough and ready. Uh, the rougher it is, the better uh, it fishes. And it's a kind of fly nymph type. It's a wet nymph type pattern, so uh, so like this one, it will all represent because of the colours. It will represent the nymph because of this pale colour. So anyway, especially when it's obviously hatching. Hoot choice up to yourself. Uh, the hoot can be this is a competition heavyweight size ten. You want to be able, you want to tie someone a lighter wire hoot like a say a com uh, an all-purpose medium ten. Uh, so anyway, there that's so that just lifts a wee bit higher. Because this fly could go anywhere in the cast. It depends on how, what depth you're fishing or what you'll find in the nymphs or at a certain point of the day they'll be quite deep and then they'll start to come up as they're hatching. So you want to bring your fly up your cast. Now, as I say, tens is probably the most popular size in the lochs because uh, it is a big fly. In the river, if you're tying a wet fly, you want fourteens. You can tie them around it, four sixteens if you want. Uh, but if you're on the lake or in the lochs and you're, all of them are coming off, you're looking mainly 12s and 14s. So, anyway, thread choice, a wee bit unusual. Uh, that colour uh, thread, uh, which is an underbody, is quite dark. And when the fly's wet, you'll see it, and that's what you want. You want that mix of the brown and the, the yellow, or the pale colour. So anyway, start at the, th the eye, just quickly run down. Now the tail can be the natural pheasant tail, or it can be like this one here. This is a feather I got from Vineyards, it's a bleached and dyed olive. Uh, it's a nice colour. It's a very pale olive, so it suits the fly. So you're looking for, I, I usually put no more than six fibres, but you want to put enough on that compensates for losing one or two fibres. So there's about there's six there. Lengthwise, now with this fly you could reduce the length a bit, but you still want the mayfly length look. So you're looking probably at least the hook length and a bit. So I mean, I, I'm when I'm tying these, it's just everybody's got their own idea. They like a good length in their tail. Now I'm just taking that straight in the top. You see, it's curving away to one side slightly. So what I usually do to get it to come back, I just curl it towards myself. And that usually lines them up, sets them a wee bit better. A couple of turns to skewer, trim at the length of the body. Now, you leave your cell a good 3mm for the, the head, because I'm going to be using a natural tight dubbing at the head. Rib, uh, you're looking for a small oval gold tinsel. Now, at this point, I like to make sure these are secure. So, we just make sure. I like to make sure they're tied in and the length of the body anyway, and then come back down. Stop short of the where you want the body to start, 
and then the dubbing blend. Now it's a natural seals for, and a wee touch of yellow with it. I'll show you, you can see it there in the packet. So if you can look here, you'll see there is a wee touch of yellow, and it. it's very pale. It's to basically go with the the colour of the body. So. Just lightly dub it on. Just slide it up. Now, as I say, I'm, I'm at this point I'm just going to work towards the, the tail a wee bit. Quite a thin bit of dubbing. And then I start to work my way up. It's just, sometimes it makes it easier to do. Uh, to get a taper. Check my body length. Now you want a nymph like shape in the body so it's going it tapered. They say it does represent, like, it gives the impression of the nymph colours and nymph colours. So if you were tying a nymph, these colours would work. Now, Harkel, a nice, it's a yellow, pale yellow. This is, it looks quite bright. I'm not sure how it looks in the, the camera when I'm looking at it, it looks quite bright, but it's actually quite, it's a paler colour than you think. You'll see it more when it's a single feather. So take away the waist at the base, trim the stem, leave enough to tie it in. So a bit of wax here on my thread, plenty of grip. Just use my hackle pliers here so you can see what I'm doing. I always like a turn or two at the top and then you just quickly run down through looking three or four turns. Now it could be heavier, it's up to yourself. Fibre could be shorter as well. You can mess around with this pattern. Straight turn at the back, looking four to five turns up the body. Usually when I get to this point here, I just pull back the hackle fibres. Tie in your, your rib, nice and tight. Trim away. I usually rub the end of the oval tinsel with my nail just to flatten it. Bit of wax. Work down towards the eye. And there's a couple of fibres there. I usually draw them back and then use the thread turns to hold them out of the way. That's them. Move the point of the hackle. Now, the French partridge. We've got the natural French Patrick Shackle. Now you could use a pale yellow as well in this. I want some of the grey, I want the grey in, in this fly. The grey yellow works really well. Take away the fluff at the base. I'm going to use my hackle pliers here just to locate the tip. Draw back the fibre. Trim it so it's Enough to tie it on. And then it's just a matter of winding. You could use the hackle pliers, but these are nice long stems. I usually just keep a hold of these fibres as I wind. Use up the hackle. Nice degree bend into the stem. Now the stem of this feather is really thin, so I usually like to fold it back and tidy things up. And break it off. See what it's like? It's fine. Now the dubbing for the head. Now this is optional. Now, but this is what I like. This is a kind of fly type nymph impression. And that's why I used it. It's just a mix of rabbit and UV. So I've got some on my desk here, so I usually like to take the thread towards the eye and work up towards the hackles. Just lightly dub it on my, my thread. Slide it up. I say, just work your way up. It's quite loose like, open a wee bit. Use the thread as your as your rib in a way, just working your way, get a nice shape in it, come back through towards the eye, stroke back, 
And if I was going forward, this go back. You won't you'll not get them all like you'll get most of them. Form a small head. And then I usually like to put some varnish on my thread. And then quite finish. Got a fibre there. You never get away without looking at an odd fibre. And you can trim them out. Now, another thing you can do uh, is just, now you normally allow, allow that to dry, but I'll show you, you just get some Velcro. Just hold your feathers back. And I, I use that lightly, just get the Velcro to touch. Bring out some of the dubbing. And then stroke it back. There we are. And that's it. So, so that's the basically the 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 mayfly. This is what this is when you especially the the nymphs are coming off. The fly is hatching. Sorry, you see the nymph more than you see anything else. You'll see them in the water. This is a great point fly. Depends. It's usually a point that would probably go, even though it's a palmer. It's a very soft colour, very soft type dressing. So see, if you really palmer it, you'll you best to put it in the top dropper or so. But you want to move this around in your cast through the day. Point, middle and then the top. Uh, and it'll work for you. You'll, you'll know when to fish it. And then, as I say, you can mess about with it. This is the done. This is a nymph, more like, uh, if you're fishing as a team. So I put this up the line and this in point. So anyway, there we are. Nice pattern. As I say, there's from the original to there, is a version of the larger Mayfly. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And again, thanks for watching.